Let's talk about crouch gait and what muscles do to, during crouch gait and what we can learn about crouch gait from muscle driven simulations. We care about this because it's quite common. Individuals, for example, cerebral palsy walk down in a crouch gait. It's energetically inefficient. It loads your joints. Uh, can, they can be painful, it makes you shorter and is an inefficient way to, to move. Kat Steele was a, a student here at Stanford and during her PhD she worked with our lab and with Michael Swartz at the Gillette Children's Specialty Healthcare Center to develop simulations of crouch gait. So here we have uh, typical walking here, a mild crouch and a moderate crouch and it, it went to severe crouch. Now these muscle driven simulations were based on experimental data of individual subjects who had crouch gait, but they give us much greater ability to analyze what's happening under the hood, what the muscle forces are, what the joint forces are, and cause-effect relationship, like are, is there diminished body weight support, or if we strengthen a particular muscle, would that help their crouch gait? So those are the simulations of crouch gait. For example, you can analyze muscle contributions to fore-aft acceleration. So remember the ground reaction forces, the fore-aft ground reaction forces. That's what's uh, shown here in the shaded area. So we have a backward directed ground reaction force and then about mid stance phase it shifts to forward direction. What muscles are producing that? In typical unimpaired gait, you see the vast iron, they're providing body weight support, but they're also producing this backward directed acceleration. Later in stance, remember gastroc comes on, its excitation comes on, it's generating force and it produces a forward generated acceleration. So you see in typical gait, without any impairments, these two muscles are working with each other. One's on first, it shuts down, then the other one comes on and propels you forward. That's not the case in crouch gait. Even with a mild crouch gait, what you see is that the muscles are on the entire time. So gastrocnemius is on early, it's producing a forward acceleration, and the vast eyes stay on during the entire stance phase. You're down in a crouch, so you need your quadriceps to support your body weight, otherwise you'll collapse. So these muscles stay on and they produce a backward directed acceleration. So instead of this nicely tuned one and then the other, both muscles are on at the same time. And we were talking to Mike Swartz about this data and he said, this is basically inefficient. Crouch gait is inefficient because it's like driving with the brakes on. So you're driving, you're in late stance, the gastrocnemius is on, it's producing a ground reaction force that is directed toward the front of your body, propelling you forward, but your vasti are still on. Your knees are flexed, you need your quadriceps and vasti to support your body weight, and it's producing a negative acceleration. So you're driving forward, but your brakes are still on. And driving with your brakes on is certainly gonna cost more energy than this nice efficient mechanism we have during typical walking. Knee flexion increases with the severity of crouch. So what I'm showing here is simply the knee flexion angle versus crouch gait. Now in unimpaired walking, remember your knee flexes a little bit during the stance phase and then a lot during the swing phase. In a mild crouch, you're flexed just a little bit during the stance phase and you still get a lot of flexion during swing. Moderate and severe, you have more knee flexion during the stance phase. So you never straighten your leg. You really flex down at a pretty low level. You lose height and the question is, what happens to forces in your quadriceps? What happens to forces in your knee joints? Why is it costing so much energy and why do your joints hurt? You can use a muscle driven simulation to get answers to those questions. So the quadriceps force increase dramatically with crouch. So um, again, typical gait shown in orange down here, moderate, I'm sorry, mild and moderate, and then severe crouch gait. And you see the quadriceps force have to go way up. I'm plotting in terms of body weights here. The scale is six body weights. So you're generating in this case, five times body weight. So if I weigh 150 pounds, I've got five times that in my quadricep muscles. And those 
very high forces in my quads are producing very high loads in my knee, in my patellofemoral joint, and in my tibiofemoral joint. No wonder individuals with crouch gait get osteoarthritis in their early 20s and have knee pain in their teens. That makes clear because we can compute these things that we just can't get from experimental data. I'm not going to go through all the details of what each muscle is doing during crouch gait, but I will say that muscle-driven simulations provide insights that can improve treatment outcomes, both from just analyzing the biomechanics and also using the biomechanical insights in machine learning and statistical models to predict outcomes. So I encourage you to learn how to generate muscle-driven simulations and explore the text and the papers upon which these uh, results are based to gain more insights into the details of muscle-driven simulations. So with that, I want to go and move on to our next section, which is the effects of walking speed in uh, muscle actions.